What a treat this is. I have never in my life got to check off that bucket list item of having a really sick, dedicated home theater. But if I were to check that off, I would probably have in that theater awesome, huge, plushy leather seats that recline like this one. This is maybe not the right way to open this box, but this is a Tuscany theater chair from Valencia. And today I'm gonna try to get it out of the box <laughs> and show you guys what it's all about. My hands are in the cup holders. Well, I guess this means I don't need to assemble very much. Now, you gotta be careful that you don't cut into your chair. The reason we have this chair is because Jake ordered it to be used as a listening chair in a listening station in the lounge for listening to really badass headphones. I don't know if anyone's ever gonna sit there, but they should. Now for the embryonic sac. Oh, look at we found an armrest that has an air hydraulic. So that is pretty nice and deep for putting your tablet and your remotes and everything you might wanna have with you, maybe your e-reader, that goes this deep. This is the backrest. And luckily for me, assembly is toolless, so it should only take me a second to get this on. You can see there's a power plug here because the lumbar support and the headrest are adjustable and powered. This is the back. So here we have the power cable. Comes with some Velcro to cable magic, which is nice. It's this long, which is, I think a decent amount. I wouldn't say it's generous, but it's probably enough for most rooms. Now, this is a single seater. On their website, you have the option of buying a single chair with two arms, or to get a chair that only has one arm that you would stack into a row, or you can get love seats and four seats and six seats all together. The question is, when you get those other ones, like three, four, or five seats, do they have three, four, five plugs coming out of them? My guess is not, they probably have one. But what I'll say is if you buy two that are single seats like this, you're probably gonna need two plugs. I don't see any way to daisy chain them. So bear that in mind. So I think step one is to attach power. And then after that, I just need to slot these male ends into these female ends. Or maybe I'll just do that first. Ah, <laughs> excuse me. Now it's on there. Okay, this has got a nice flap with a big strip of Velcro to close it. Before I do that, I need to connect the power. So is it possible to screw this up or not? One is red, the other is just black. This one's red, two different prongs that are keyed. Then there's a lock on that. And then what's nice is if you have any excess cable, you can just loop it up and tie it down in here so you only have the amount you need coming off of the couch and into view. But I think we're gonna need all of it. So let's close that up. No, it slides pretty easily enough. The feet on the bottom are just plastic. I hope I'm not scratching the floor. Now, if you get multiple, they are friction fit. Now, of course, mine doesn't have any locking mechanisms for to go together like, you know, a sectional couch might, but that's because this one is meant to be a single seater. If you get the ones that are meant to lock together, they will not have an armrest on one of the sides and you just abut them in a row, but it is a friction fit. Now these are pretty heavy and on carpet, I don't think they'll slide very easily. You see, I'm out of breath just trying to move it around. Um, so I, I think the friction fit is probably fine, but your mileage may vary. Okay, we're plugged in and I'm ready to give you my comments on the feel. We're after this message from our sponsor, Honey. Honey is the free online shopping tool that searches for all the best promo codes whenever you shop online at specific sites. It's free to use and installs in just two clicks. Honey works on lots of your favorite stores, including Amazon, eBay, Newegg, Razor, Best Buy, Walmart, and a ton more. All you have to do is click apply coupons while you're at the checkout page and wait for Honey to search for the best working coupons. So get Honey for free right now at joinhoney.com slash short circuit. All right, making use of the cup holder here. Do these come out? Oh yeah, okay. Easy to wash. Does this come off? Yeah, all right. Get these out of here. Okay, so there's a fair amount of cushiness when you sit on it. Uh, in terms of how firm it is, it does feel like there's some uh, resistance to the foam, but it does cushion and squish quite a bit. This is Napa leather. 11,000, whatever that means. Napa leather is uh, known for being soft, but there's no certification for it. It is just genuine leather. This has two armrests. Oh, and look, it comes with little feet to put on the feet <laughs> so that they don't scratch your floor. That's nice. And here's the instruction manual that I never used. Wow, they tell you not to use a knife to open the box, even though the instructions are in the box. 
Thanks for that. So the color we have here is actually color matched to the chairs we already have in the lounge. The standard colors they offer are midnight black, dark chocolate, which looks really nice, and russet brown, which I don't really love. Um, but as you can see here, you can customize your color. They'll give you a swatch. You can choose from a multitude of different colors and different color stitching. So we have this white. All of the seat area and the armrests on their website are advertised as being that Napa leather. Now, the other areas of the couch, I can't really tell, but sometimes chairs do something called leather match where the other parts of the chair uh, will be some non-leather material that perhaps is less durable and is cheaper and it keeps the cost down. This, if they're doing that, I can't really tell. And that diamond stitch leather does really have a nice theater, luxurious kind of look. The depth of this seat is 39 and three quarter inches, which is pretty deep. If I put my back right against it, my feet are dangling quite a bit off the ground, maybe four inches off the ground. I'm only five, eight and a half though, so your mileage may vary. Um, if I slouch a bit, my feet can easily hit the ground. Uh, the height of the chair itself is uh, 43 and a half inches. I think the seat back is a good height. With some chairs, it's a problem if, the, if this is too tall, because you could actually be blocking the sound from your surround or surround back speakers, which you don't want, but this seems pretty reasonable. Some chairs you can get in different heights. I don't believe you can with these. The reason you would do that is so that your second row of theater seats are raised above. You get that stadium seating without having to build a riser, which actually can be pretty tricky. Now the width of the chair is 37 and a half inches, which is enough for a smaller person or a medium sized person like me. If you're a thick boy, I guess in, I think someone who's over 200 pounds would fit in here, but going larger and larger, your mileage may vary. They do have love seat options where there's no arm here and it just goes wider into something for two people. Similarly, they do offer curved configurations, but again, you're buying multiple seats kind of connected together. The armrest, this is definitely a one person kind of armrest. If you stack these along in a row, um, you might have to fight over this a little bit. I mean, two people could share this if they're intimate with one another, but you know, that's the internal struggle of chairs, sharing the armrest. Now, of course, the width of the chair matters, including the armrest width when you're designing the layout of your home theater. You know, you need to have enough room, at least on one side, to access the seat. But also, you have to think about the front and back. Am I so close to a wall that when I recline, I'm gonna hit the wall? This chair is designed to be able to be put pretty close. So, Brandon, why don't you step over here? So, if this is our starting point, totally not reclined, imagine there's a wall behind me. This is how much more room it takes up when reclined. You can see I'm sliding forward mostly to a maximum depth of 69, nice and a half inches. I might just stay here. Then there's the powered headrest. For that, the, the goal here is to lift the head enough that I can still watch the TV comfortably. Whoop. Oh, actually that is so supportive and nice. You could just go back and forth with this and it's like a massage. That is cool. I don't feel like I need an extra pillow at all. It might be nice to have something like a bolster on the side, but Yes, this is very comfortable. Oh, cool, and of course, I can independently adjust the recline while having the head rest stay the same. Oh, then there's the third setting for the lumbar support. That is aggressive lumbar support in its max. That's awesome, actually, because when I don't have the lumbar support advanced at all, I feel kind of collapsed in this chair at this particular angle. But with it pressed a little bit, now I feel way more it's like the feeling of driving a Jeep when you're up high on the road. I feel like I can just really attentively consume content with this. Now, another thing to consider is how much noise does the chair make when it's reclining? This is not silent. Depending on how loud the movie is, I don't know, you might get distracted. I don't think people are really gonna be adjusting their chairs too much throughout the show, but it is a noise. The headrest is more silent. And then the lumbar one is also pretty quiet. Of course, there's always gonna be some noise just from the friction of the leather against your body. Oh, that's another thing. This leather does not appear to be too squeaky. Taking a look at the controls here, you've got a button for the footrest up and down, you've got lumbar in and out, and you've got the headrest up and down. Okay, there's a USB port, not USB-C, that is for charging your phone or whatever else you have over here. Then there's this button. This button, if you hold it down, we'll reset the chair. So it brings, let's say you have 
the foot up a bit, you got some lumbar support going, and then your headrest is up a bit. If you wanna reset the chair so it's back to baseline for the next person, you hold this down. It doesn't look like this has one tap functionality for let's say saved profiles where I hit number one and that it reclines the chair just to the degree that I like it and puts on the lumbar support that I need. It's pretty basic, you have to do it manually every other time. Now if I tap the reset button, that's how I control the LEDs. Now unfortunately, uh, there is only one LED color and it is a binary toggle on and off uh, without a gradient of dimmable levels and the cup holder light is connected to the floor light. Now these are all frills but it would be nice if they were independent, if I can make them super dim because I'm really distracted by them but it'd be nice to have some. There could be situations where we want the floor lights but not this light. If you're in the middle of a movie and you're looking for your drink hole and you hit that light on. You might not want the floor light on. It'd just be nice to have more decoupling of all these things, but no chair is perfect. And as you can see, there's so many different things to think about with a recliner like this that you kind of just need to get as close to perfect as you can with the things that you care about. There's one more test I want to do, which is the spill test using this 40 ounce water bottle from, ooh, I already spilled unintentionally, lttstore.com. So let's say you get a spill. It looks like it really beads up and looks easily wipeable using your stealth hoodie from lttstore.com. These things, I'm still not positive what they are. I thought from the pictures that they were gonna be buttons for LEDs and stuff, but I think I have an idea. Hold on. No chair would be complete without the accessories. You can get wine glass holders, tablet holders, and of course, carbon fiber tray tables as accessories for theater chairs. And they were nice enough to send us this tray table and this box, which I have no idea what this is. And my suspicion is that these accessories connect to the chair using these mysterious mounts. All right, carbon fiber tr tray. I mean, I don't know if it, this needed to be carbon fiber. It can freely spin. I mean, that's kind of nice. I wish I could change the angle of this a bit. It, it is kind of on an incline. I could roll a ball off it for sure. Oh God, yeah, kind of basic. Almost looks like it has like a hatch in there for batteries or something and then, I don't know what these channels are for either, but that's it. Yeah, it's good enough to put a plate on, a plate of nachos on or something. I kind of wish it slid out so you can get it more centered on you, but it's not bad. Now what's in this box? Oh, it's a tablet holder actually. Oh, sweet. So you can adjust the width, put your device in there. Cool, picture in picture, two games going. Not the greatest fit, but it's a pretty discreet accessory, so I don't mind that at all, it's okay. One thing that is nice about this mounting system is that it doesn't occupy the cup holders. There are some designs where you lose that cup holder if you, if you have the accessory, so that's cool that they're complimentary. This kind of already scratched. Do you see that? That kind of sucks just because it's metal on metal. One thing I wonder is, can my table fit in my storage? I do have to take this off, but that's cool, there's no compartment to slide this in. I guess it's just gonna be in there. And what about this one? Uh, hmm. Mm, eh, eh, eh. This is just excess. Oh, I feel like one of the people at the end of that movie, uh, Wally. -E. Excuse me for a moment as I devolve. Okay, so this is a pretty bougie chair. I'm sure you can get more expensive ones. I'm sure you can get cheaper ones. From where I'm sitting, this is a pretty nice thing to have. So is it the chair for you? That depends on your theater, your budget, and your doorway. You need a doorway that is at least 24 and a half inches wide to get this chair in the room. But that's smaller than a standard door width, so you should probably be okay. So thanks for watching guys. If you liked this video, hit like, hit subscribe, and check out some of our other chair videos that we made for some reason, including this gaming chair that Colton made. He's a gamer.